it feels like today, and uh, it feels like there are a lot of new things going on, a new year, and I see someone new that's sitting up here at the panel. You know, we had an extra seat all these years, and we finally filled it with our county administrator, Frank Baker, Baker Street. But Frank, I look around, I'm a little bit lonely up here. And perhaps uh, you could take some action on that like you take someone's action on so many other things. Maybe introductions are in order. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to do that because obviously you don't have a quorum right now. <laughs> and I think to conduct the business of the people, I think you're going to have to have a quorum. So it's, it's my honor to uh, introduce the uh, post commissioners. We'll start with post one on the far side of the room over here. Post one, Commissioner Ron Davis. He's going to come on up. <laughs> Commissioner Davis is an IT professional with 22 years of experience in infrastructure management and information security. He recently received the uh, certified county uh, commissioner's recognition from the ACCG and UGA, that's Carl Vinson, and the um, Associ Association of County Commissioners. Congratulations on that. That's quite an honor, and that's tough to do. It's a lot of, a lot of work. One thing that uh, I found interesting about Commissioner Davis, and I didn't know this, he, he, he is a huge baseball fan, those of you who know him, uh, and he loves the Atlanta Braves. But I didn't know this until recently, that he actually tried out for the Kansas City Royals baseball club when he was in high school. There you go. And, and in, in true Baker Street style, those of you who know me, uh, that's my nickname from, uh, from the song, actually, Baker Street. Um, one of the things that um, I find interesting is that Commissioner Davis's favorite song is I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty. And he actually likes the version of Johnny Cash better than the Tom Petty version. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you Post Commissioner 1, Ron Davis. All right, Post Commissioner 2, Commissioner Sandy Caker. <laughs> I'm excited to introduce um, Commissioner Caker this morning, she uh, has a twin. I didn't know that until uh, actually yesterday when she and I talked a little bit. Uh, she's an Air Force brat. Um, a lot of us are. I'm, I'm a, a Marine Corps brat myself. And, uh, and uh, she was born and raised in Florida. And uh, I, know, uh, I know from time to time, I'm sure you miss that Florida weather, especially when you get all this rain. Um, she's a fighter. She's a go-getter. And she's very resilient. And those are things that she had uh, mentioned to us when we were talking the last couple of days and last couple of weeks. Her favorite color is blue. I think that's great. I love blue, too. And again, in true Baker Street style, and I love this song myself, her favorite song, one of her favorite songs is by Garth Brooks, The Dance. Ladies and gentlemen, Post 2 Commissioner Sandy Caker. At this time, I want to introduce the Post 3 Commissioner, Mr. Chuck Hart. <laughs> Commissioner Hart, he prioritizes, prioritizes, uh, excuse me this morning, I, I, I was up late watching uh, Clemson and uh, Alabama play last <laughs> night. I'm sure some of, the, some of you are. His priorities in life, he, he, he has them in this order, faith, family, and friends. Um, he wants to serve others like others, would ser like others people would serve, and he wants to finish well. And I think that's admirable. We all want to finish well, and we all want to finish strong. Uh, he, he gets a lot of kidding from his buddies because uh, he, he enjoys hunting, fishing, and golfing. And I hope I still am the county administrator here after this meeting. Uh, he gets kidded when he uh, talks about the fact that he goes uh, every once in a while quarterly and gets a pedicure with his wife. That's why his buddies kind of kind of rib him a little bit. And I'm pleased to announce we have another person that loves Garth Brooks the dance, and that's Commissioner Hart. Ladies and gentlemen, Post Commissioner Three, Chuck Hart.
And last but not least, as Post Commissioner Four, Mr. Brian Stover. <laughs> Commissioner Stover can uh, best describes himself as an entrepreneur with a generous side and a, a great sense of humor. So we're going to find out about that in the coming months. And it's true, I've gotten to know him a little bit as I have the other board members coming, uh, come, come, coming through the last couple of months with them. And he does have a good sense of humor. Uh, he's married to his wife, Rachel, and he has three children. Um, and I'm pleased to announce that he's a 1994 graduate of Paulding County High School. So that's great. Um, I won't tell you what I was doing in 1994. I'm feeling a little old today and tired from that Clemson game last night. And his, one of his favorite songs is My Way by Elvis Presley. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the post commissioners and the chairman of the board of commission. One little word before I call the meeting to order is Frank Baker was the Atlanta Clemson president for a few years. And that's really uh, kind of unusual because he didn't go to Clemson, but huge Clemson fan. So. Uh, I tried to pull him down off the ceiling this morning. Uh, so at this time, uh, I will call the uh, January the 8th, 2019 work session Board of Commissioners meeting to order. And Brian, if you'd bring forward the uh, citizens wishing to speak, you have a phone that you still have on, might want to turn that off. And we've got quite a few elected officials uh, pretty close to me there is Frank Moran, City Councilman at Hiram and looking around help me out if y'all see an elected official back there yeah yeah he's just dwarfed there by by david but jimmy henson uh, city councilman in, in, with dallas so glad to have you here jimmy uh jason jason Anvitardi from yeah school board i here. snuck in a school board member jason Anvitardi. welcome jason thank you for being here um <clears throat> all right appreciate the help guys i can't see everybody and um it is quite an honor. It always uh, makes me happy to have uh, Pastor Johnny McBurris in our midst. He uh, has done so much in Paulding County. He currently serves on the uh, Tax Assessor Board. He's on the Library Board. He um, uh, is on the County Health Board. And someone there finds time to drive to Moult Moultrie once a week and uh, help prepare uh, young men for the ministry. And uh, Johnny, this community is made a lot stronger by your presence uh, at this time. If you would bring our invocation and lead us in the pledge, the flag stand if you're able. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. Our great God and Father, we come again before your throne of grace and mercy, thanking you, Lord God, for the many blessings we enjoy as a great nation, a great county, and a great city. Lord God, we lift up our commissioners now. We pray that there will be unity, cooperation, that you would bind them together. We pray, Lord God, you give them the wisdom as Solomon asked for, to lead your great people, to lead this county. We pray also for the citizens of Paul and Lord God, that they would be prayer warriors to lift up and hold up those who are in office to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. We pray for our first respondents and all of the public servants in Paul and County. Our Father, we just thank you now. We lift them up one by one and name by name that you would be with them and give them good health and the wisdom they need to carry out the assignment that the citizen of Pauline elected them to do. For we ask this all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor McBurrows pastors the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church. It's a great place to go worship, so I would encourage that. Uh, under minutes, the December 11th, 2018 work session minutes and the December 11th board meeting minutes are available for review. Under announcements, uh, we started something new in the county which is the employee of the month. And so we've had two months where names are submitted uh, by department heads or by fellow employers, fellow employees. And um, 
for the month of uh, this month, You're kind of skipping around there, but for this month, uh, there's the first month of December, which is uh, Deanna Morrison works in the tax assessor's office, and then uh, D. Hunter there in that picture right there, who uh, works in elections. Uh, they they get a close parking spot and a half day off, and so uh, we look forward to having this morale builder around uh, for the rest of the year. We have uh, on the Board of Commissioners mission, vision, and values that we initiated two years ago. And, you know, words have meaning, not whether it's uh, during a wedding, whether it's an oath of office like three of our, our new commissioners took on December uh, 21st, or uh, in many other occasions, words are significant and have a meeting. And since this is the first uh, meeting, of uh, 2019, I thought it uh, was uh, valuable to uh, review those and, and kind of renew our vows as commissioners. And rather than do that from up here, I've asked uh, three citizens, I only see two of them here this morning, but uh, we'll start with Mr. Uh, Tommy Morris, who's going to share with us and review for us our uh, mission. And uh, I've given them the the recommendation if they want to say anything else about that mission or just encouragement or uh, accountability to us that, that would be great also so Tommy thank you for doing that this morning thank you mr. chairman I was real sick last night about midnight watching football game and then I come in here this morning and find that Frank is a big Clemson fan I was hoping I wouldn't see any Clemson fans today but Clemson was a better team last night congratulations it is good to be with you today with three new commissioners. Uh, Dave asked me to, to read over the mission statement, and I did that, and I'll add, add a few comments, and it won't take very long, but just a few comments I'd like to share with you today. The Board of Commissioners and staff will, with unity and purpose, work to enhance citizens' quality of life by maximizing resources to make Paulding County a better place to live, work, and play. What does that really mean? To me, it means unity and purpose. In today's world, we're kind of a fishbowl. Everyone knows what's going on in county government, state government, federal government. And so if you are working together, people will know that. If you're not working together, they'll know that also. And we've talked a lot about bringing new businesses into the county, trying to bring new businesses in so that it will enhance the residents who live here so they're not having to pay as much property tax. Change that tax base and bring new businesses in. But if a company is wanting to come into Paulding and they sense that there's not unity on the governing board, the outcome is probably not going to be good as far as landing that company. So I think that's really important for you to consider. Does that mean all of you have to have the same ideas about the best way to solve the problems? I don't think so. I think it's good to have diversity of ideas as you're talking about different issues. What's really important, you've got to be in, united in deciding the most pressing issues, and I would urge you to get feedback from your constituents and then have your discussions about the best ways to solve the problems that are facing Paulding County. Much has been said about new businesses and the infrastructure. Uh, I tend to think of infrastructure having two different things going for it. If you have more infrastructure, you can bring more businesses in. If you have more infrastructure like water and sewer, you're also taking care of furnishing a need to many residents in this county who do not have water and sewer right now. So water and sewer improvements will bring in new businesses and it will also work to, to take care of a need for residents of this county. So I would hope that you would take a look at that, along with many other things you'll be looking at. You're going to be faced with a lot of real challenges. You'll probably hear, well, I didn't want you to do this, I didn't want you to do that, and you know, it's going to be hard to get agreement. You'll make mistakes. All of us make mistakes at some point in time. So you learn from your mistakes, but you're faced with real challenges, but I'm convinced that this board will work together with unity and purpose to make our county a better place to live, work, and play 
and I thank you for being willing to serve in this capacity. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tommy. Um, I had asked uh, a young lady to read the vision and to share her ideas since, oh, you're here? Okay. Uh, well, great, Cecilia. So, so grateful to you for also coming to share the vision and then making any comments that, that you would like to. First off, Happy New Year to everybody, all of y'all here, and I'll be back in the back too. Thank you. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Um, I'm here to read the vision. The Paulding County Board of Commissioners will operate as an effective and efficient governing body on behalf of all the citizens of Paulding County to make Paulding County the preeminent place in the Atlanta metropolitan area to live, work, and play. Keywords there, live, work, and play. I think those are very, very important here. Um, I think the most important thing that I can do as a citizen is to say a prayer for each and every one of you daily, a sincere prayer for to be prosperous, to make the right decisions, to be diligent in your work, and I wish all five of you the absolute very best. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Thanks so much, Cecilia. And for our um, values that spell out the word heart, uh, I've asked Reverend Cord Franklin if he would come and do the honor of reading those values and make any comments that he would like to uh, for this new, new guard here. Good morning to each and every one of you. I will read the values for Paulding County, and then at the end of the reading of the values, I will issue a charge to each and one of you as commissioners. The values state that Paulding County, Georgia is a community that is unique in the Atlanta metropolitan area in its opportunities, diverse citizenry, and recreational programs, but most of all, in its heart. The Paulding County Board of Commissioners will honor these values. H, for honesty, equality, and openness in government. E, for excellence in working with all levels of government and supporting citizen involvement. A, for accountability, in order to ensure financial and personal integrity. R, for respect within the county government and to our citizens. And T is for teamwork and transparency in order to promote equality decision making. And now I would charge you as a board, in the presence of all these witnesses and the presence of God Almighty, to uphold the principles in attendance and the ethics of these values. I charge you as a board to be committed to each other, always knowing that this board is only as strong as you are unified. Remember that you are a community with each other and not in competition with each other. I ask that you pray for one another, support one another, and when you don't agree on a particular course of action, disagree without becoming disagreeable. I charge you to harness the drum major instinct. When you feel the desire to be out front, when you feel the desire for self-recognition and not team accomplishment, harness that desire. But if you must lead, lead in, a, in the service of Paulding County. If you must lead, lead in a demonstration of ethnic behavior before one another. If you must lead, lead in upholding the values of Paulding County. As I charge you today, will you accept this charge and be committed to all of the citizens of Paulding County and faithfully discharge the responsibilities of the office for the duration of your term? If you will be responsible for that, simply say, I will. Okay. Amen. Thank you so much. To have citizens speak that, uh, I can only speak for me personally, means so much. Thank you very much, all three, for taking the time to be here. Uh, I think uh, we need to visit your church also, Corda. I've been, been there a couple of times and I always enjoy it immensely. Um, next, we'd like to uh, recognize our Pauline County department heads, which uh, all got the memo and wore their gray today. 
But uh, we're going to have their, their picture on the front page of the paper next week. So at that time, uh, you can read the paper and, and see their names. I'm just going to ask them all to come up for a photo opportunity and kind of half moon circle here in front, and uh, we'll get a picture of everyone. And th this is just our recommitment to our department heads for all they do and their leadership of their individual staffs. Thank you, department heads. That's the backbone of your county right there. And last under announcements, I set aside 10 minutes, 10 minutes because I wanted uh, each of the commissioners, and of course we know three are new, uh, but it, again, it's a new year, and I've got things on my heart. I'm sure Ron's got things on his. Uh, so two minutes each, that would be the 10 minutes for us to just State something uh, as far as what our vision for 2019 is, how we see 2019, and how we hope uh, to make it better. So I'm going to start with, I uh, didn't know that about trying out for the baseball team. We're going to start with the baseball player over here and post one commissioner, Ron Davis. I think it's safe to say former baseball player at this point. They haven't called back since the mid-90s. I don't think they're going to call now. Um, this introduction felt a little bit like uh, high school basketball where they're introducing the team and you run out and everybody cheers. Uh, I tried telling Dave I wasn't newly elected, but he wasn't hearing any of it. So, um, First, let me just say congratulations to our new co-workers up here and uh, look forward to working with each of you. I mean, we've already had some conversations in that regard. 2019 is going to shape up to be a, uh, a good year. I'm excited about it. Um, as was mentioned during the reading of the mission, vision, and values, two of the things that are, are, are needed that we're, we have to address um, day one, we've already started. Uh, is water and water and sewer infrastructure, and as we um, look to expand water for for folks that don't have it, sewer for people that need it, businesses coming in uh, need to get that infrastructure. We've um, had a, our December meeting with the last board uh, sparked some conversation about water, and so uh, I'm excited. I've already had had talks with Brian, and we're gonna uh, pick up where Tony had left off with with the water issues. Um, there in post four and and uh, there's some I think post four and two is where it's needed most I think three and one on the east side of the county have a little less of a need there but we're gonna we're gonna work together and get uh, that stuff done also there are um, two big projects come to mind um, our reservoir and our jail um, we're gonna take uh, oversight we've got um, we had some hiccups in those projects to this point we're gonna we're gonna it's gonna take some some teamwork working together and, and uh, seeing those projects through and it will be good. And I'm not going to go on about all of them. I don't know where my two minute, where I am on the two minute mark, but uh, I'm sure there are other things. But I, uh, I'm sure they'll get covered here. But I am uh, I'm excited about a new year, and uh, and I hope you all are too. And with that, I'll go back to Dave. I'm not timing you. Okay. Okay, that works then. It was two minutes. If we have extra time at the end, Frank can tell us about the football game last night. <laughs> and <laughs> post two commissioner, Miss Sandy Caker. Well, I'm going to read mine. Um, and mine is more for the future, not just for 2019, just to let you know. By 2049, our county is expected to grow by almost 74%. We need to make sure that we grow smart. We need to work on our infrastructure and ensure it will hold our future growth, like Ron said. We need to work closely with the IBA and EDO to help bring light industry into Paulding to alleviate some of the tax burden on our property owners. We also need to work hand in hand with the government department, school system, the cities, and the chamber 
to build Paulding in a manner highlighting and keeping the, new, the unique character it holds today, but also to promote business opportunities so that our citizens don't have to leave our county to go to work. Thinking about the future of our children and grandchildren, my focus is to work not only for today's living, but for tomorrow's as well. Outstanding. I'm going to skip over myself and go to Post 3 Commissioner, Mr. Chuck Hart. All right, I'm like Sandy. I have to I have to read some stuff so I won't I won't forget it all. But you know, we're reminded in Proverbs, uh, the king's heart, it's uh it's in the hand of the Lord and he guides those waters how he'd do it. But you know, he does it through people like ourselves. I do feel called to do this and I do believe that he calls people to do this. Uh, I feel like you've got a board up here that's sincere in heart and that they all just want to do what's best for this county. Uh, I feel like we, we had that before, but I also feel like there was just some differences of opinions on how to get there. Uh, I have reached out to the older, um, the past commissioners, and they've all been helpful to me. And I think that going forward, we, we'll patch all those, those wounds up and we'll be able to move forward. I'm so thankful to be a steward for this county, and I will serve it to the best of my ability. You know, I've spent the last 10 months um, just really getting to know the department heads, uh, the county, uh, people as the citizens in general and the private sector investors and in the efforts that you know we uh we can we can formulate some plans to help move this thing forward you know what's so funny is i come up with all this stuff i wanted to say on these porches but you know what i figured out was listening was the best thing i could do uh these people told me a lot of things and and i heard the same things over and over again and uh in these three people who got up here and spoke i mean they touched on every one of these things that i heard on these porches so there's a lot of common goals here and i think going forward um one of the things i want to look at really is uh is making sure that the services provided you know are the services that y'all have grown to expect i feel as our county administrator he's he set this tone for um for the county and i saw it in each one of these department heads as they stood in front of me i like that it's it's a it's a team spirit and uh, everybody seems to be on board i've had these guys are reaching out to me you know even before i was in office just keeping people up to date if you ask them for something they'll do it for you uh, i'm glad that everybody seems to have pretty much a servant's heart here uh, because that's what we're going to need to push this stuff forward i know we have uh we've had some issues in retentions particularly in public safety you know and i know there's some people working hard on some uh long-term goals uh to, to put some things in place that will help you know that retention to be possible here in this county i look forward to working on that with them um i plan on working with uh, this boc to create an environment that encourages businesses to, to not just come to this county, but to want to come to this county because there is opportunity here. You know, I think I said it once before in something. I had talked to one of the reporters or something, but I told him, I said, you know, we, we've got people. You know, that's, that's big. We got people. I mean, so we've got, we've got uh, workers and we've got consumers, you know. So all we got to do is just, just keep creating these environments, taking, taking uh, these opportunities and working with private sector on just making little pockets of this thing start growing. And before you know it, it's going to be big and it's going to be contagious. And I want to tell you something, it's not just going to help, help the county, it's going to help hire them in, in Dallas. There, there aren't two more charming cities, you know, when you walk through them. I mean, these things could look like a Woodstock. I mean, I don't mean to draw parallels, but you know, you can. And, uh, and we need to emulate those people who have done things right, and we need to look into these things. And I think that's what we got to look forward to. Uh, but most of all, you know, I, I want to unify this BOC. I mean, uh, the preacher, you said it right. I mean, we just, we need unification, and, uh, and that's what's going to draw people. But we need to be unified more than just, just us, but we need to be unified with the Board of Education. We need to be unified with these uh, city, city council people. We need to be unified with our state representatives. Guys, I mean, we're not realizing the full potential, I don't feel like. And I'm not, like I said, I just, I, I want us to go that extra step, you know, in, in cultivating those relationships with those, you know, our colleagues in the city and the state level so that we can do other things. You know, that be, be creative with some solutions to some of these problems. I think some of these problem solutions are just a conversation away. Uh, most of all, 
you know, guys, I, I, I'm a guy who creates uh, boundaries and I hold accountability. I, I do that for guys that's worked for me. I've done it uh, in my own personal life. Matter of fact, I don't hold anybody more accountable than I do myself. But, but I promise you this, I'll always be approachable, I'll always be understanding, and I'll always be fair. But I, you got to give me the chance to be that. You know, uh, I saw a lot of things go on that, you know, where people were reaching out and saying some stuff. And I was like, guys, just come to me. And I invited them with my phone number and stuff. And, and that's what I want you to do. You know, we if there's a problem, you know, let's fix the problem. Man, I invite all the constructive criticism, you know, that you can throw my way because I do want to grow in this role and I want to succeed in this role because with our success becomes y'all's success. Um, you know, just just please know that, you know, full transparency, I love it. You know, I want to be an open door because that's that check and balance and that accountability piece that I just spoke of. But anyway, guys, I'm not going to take up any more of your time, but I do appreciate you. I'm thankful to my God, first of all, and I'm thankful to my family. I'm thankful to the citizens of this county for putting their trust in us. And just know this, we're going to trip, we're going to fall on our face from time to time. We're going to be moving and we're going to be trying and we're going to be working. And post four commissioner, Mr. Brian Stover has got the hardest, biggest Texas and is a very charitable man. Well, um, I'm going to start off. I probably don't have about 30 seconds left after Chuck took my time. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with ditto. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I just want to do a little joke, get my nerves settled. But uh, I really want to start off with thanking God and uh, by looking after me through this adventure and my family and friends for the support and the voters of Post 4 for believing in me through this whole process. Um, and with that, you know, one of the things I plan on working on as a commissioner is economic development. It's something I ran on and plan on making top priority. I know we have our challenges such as infrastructure, and I know that we cannot make changes overnight. But if we do, uh, but if we don't ever start taking that first step, then we will never get there to where we want to be. As I, like a lot of people that grew up in Paulden, would probably love to see it stay small. But that's long gone, and I realize that. So I believe that if we don't start controlling our growth, then all we will have one day is rooftops. We need more commercial and industrial to offset our tax base for the homeowners in Paulding. Also, our society is moving to more of a live, work, play community. And if we don't start attracting jobs in Paulding, then all we will have one day is people who have to live here, and I had rather have a county of people who want to live here. So with that, I promise to work hard for just not post four, but all of Paulton. Thank you. And I'll just finish up here. Uh, I'm so thankful to have my wife here. Uh, and uh, I know uh, Rachel and Julie and uh, Steve, y'all are, are the best part of getting us through the day. And uh, when we come home, uh, kind of, gruff and uh, you know maybe a little bit upset uh, having you all there makes all the difference in the world uh, we all can work we all can work but together we win uh, what I mean by that is it's it's the board it's the staff it's the citizens it's the constitutional officers and everyone else well, we're the ones that have to come together and that's already been mentioned it, it's not just uh, five people so we need your ideas, we want your ideas, and again, to echo others, uh, our door's open and our, our, we answer the telephone. So, you know, I'm usually the eternal optimist, but now two years in, uh, I really wanna be clear and frank, uh, because Pauline County has serious challenges. Uh, we've got a big financial challenges. We have a tax balance that's way out of balance. And our citizens pick up or they pay 89% of the dollars that creates the revenue that we need to provide necessary services. Polk County, just to our west and farther from Atlanta, uh, their citizens only pay 73%. Cobb County, it's down to 65%. Douglas County, their, their citizens pay 62%. Remember, ours is 89%. Why? because they have more commercial and light industrial uh, tax revenue than we do. Uh, we have got to have uh, commercial enterprise 
in industry to offset our very disproportionate tax balance. I can't uh, really emphasize that enough. It's a, it's a big problem, and uh, Tabitha's sick today, but she was in the office with me and Frank yesterday for a couple hours. What are we talking? We're talking about next year's budget. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just always going to be tight um, for a while anyway. So, um, you know, we don't have a whole lot of public, publicly owned property out there to, to offer. Uh, Mr. Reynolds in the room. Yeah, he knows a lot more of that than, than a lot more about that than I do, but he, he uh, keeps us informed. Um, I flew airplanes for a living for a long time. And, you know, if this Board of Commissioners had some kind of magic dust, and you've heard of crop dusting, if I could put that magic dust and fly over our uh, 310 square miles of beautiful property and land, I mean, I'd get in the plane right after we adjourned from this meeting. But we don't have that. You know, if, uh, if we're looking, if we're running for election, looking for a magic wand, uh, we nor anybody else has that. So what we've got is hard work and, again, uh, working together that, that we might win. Uh, last year, uh, and just to wrap up, we had um, two mini conferences, and they were guided by the uh, Carl Vinson Institute to talk about where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. A lot of the staff was there. There were a lot of stakeholders in business, educational stakeholders that were there. And really our, our summary was, let's use what we've got. When 650,000 people get on the Silver Comet Trail and we've got beautiful cities and we've got uh, historical things to come see recreational things that are of great value, we're going to work on tourism and, and playing that up as, as at least a start to get us going uh, into the future. And we've had the tourism group from the uh, Georgia Department of uh, Economic Development out here. So, no, I'm well over my two minutes also, but uh, we're going to work hard together and uh, make sound and careful decisions so that, that we are careful and, and strategic with your money. Uh, I always say the government doesn't have any money, uh, and we're going to use that money sparingly and carefully to move our county forward, and that's what I commit to you is, is my vision. And I'm so glad to be sharing uh, with this board and <clears throat> thankful for that also. So under invited guests, we have none. Uh, under bid awards, we have none. Uh, we do have a need for uh, five minutes of uh, closed session, executive session for personnel. So. And then we don't really have a long meeting. We've got uh, a few reports when we come back. But if you can stay for those reports for five minutes, great. If not, wish you a happy new year again. And thank you for coming out to, to recognize the new year and a, a newly constituted board. And would someone make a motion that we go into executive session for personnel? I'll make a motion. That okay, we've got a, a motion. Is there a second? Uh, motion is second. All those in favor say Can aye. Can we uh, discuss, Dave, just briefly? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm Georgia, sorry. Georgia uh, law allows us to take business out of the out of the room. Uh, personnel is one of the reasons we are allowed to do that. It doesn't require it, uh, but it does allow it. When we're back there, we have an attorney with us who keeps us in line to make sure that we don't cross out of what we're allowed to be back there for. Inside the Open Meetings Act, there is a, um, there's verbiage uh, about what is or is not allowed specifically about personnel. Um, and I hesitate to go back there without attorney guidance. Um, everybody in this room knows what you guys are going to executive session for. Um, I would I would say let's just do this here. Okay. If if, if that's okay, um, and that's 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 my preference. Uh, we we do not have an attorney on the panel uh, at the present time. Uh, if you uh, read that we can do the business in here. <clears throat> Yeah, we're never required to take it out. Okay. So um, we won't go to executive session? Well, you, you do need to vote on that motion. That's my opinion. That needs to, we need to vote on that motion of what, <clears throat> what the board wants to do. He can, yeah, he can withdraw that motion, or we can, uh, we can vote on the motion. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hart withdrew the motion to go into executive session. Um, so now we have nothing to vote on. So we're going to say the five minutes uh, is over with, and 
uh, since I'm the one that's supposed to nominate for this uh, action item anyway, I'm going to. Uh, well, I think at this point, we would typically go on with reports from committees and departments, but Dave, if you have something you'd like to add to new business, I think now's the time you'd make that motion to add to new business. And then a majority of the board can, a majority of the board can um, add that to the agenda. <clears throat> okay, so uh, here's the motion. Um, make a motion for action at the two, uh, 2 p.m. meeting to appoint Tally Richardson Cable, PA, as the county attorney and authorize um, and author authorize the chairman to enter into a contract for such purposes. So that's the motion. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. I have a second by uh, Commissioner K uh, Caker. And is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. And any opposed? Nay. We have uh, four ayes and one nay, so carries 4-1, and that will be added to the afternoon agenda. So at this time... Uh, do you have another... I, Dave, I'm sorry. Do you have another item to add to the agenda? I do not. Are you, are you going to... Are you going to do something about the fact that we currently have a county attorney? Has she, has uh, she resigned? Yes. When was that? Uh, during the week. The, uh, <clears throat> I mean, is there a... The, uh, the interim um, position actually is considered uh, available for a nomination and a change. No, um, we haven't county attorney until we fire her or until she resigns. The interim doesn't need to be terminated. And on is there is uh, yeah I, I didn't see you uh, Jason if uh, if you would just comment not so much well, could, you know could, you could he go to a microphone Dave Say again. could he go to a microphone please there's people downstairs I believe and folks watching online that won't hear him if he yells from the back of the room <laughs> morning Jason Good morning. Uh, thank you for calling me for, uh, now obviously I am not the county attorney. Uh, the interim county attorney is Lonnie Skipper. But as a citizen of Paulding County and as an attorney at law, I'll be happy to give you my opinion on that. Uh, you have, I think, uh, back in the day, back in March, uh, Ms. Skipper was appointed as the interim county attorney. Interim simply means you're the county attorney until the successor is appointed. All right, you're not serving a term. Your interim. It's like an interim position for a leader of an agency. When the new leader is appointed uh, through the proper procedure, then that new appointment will take over for that position by operational law. That's my thought on that. I'll be happy to answer any questions that do you, you may have. Do you know, does the, gov the, the, um, the laws governing Paulding County address the word interim with attorney? I know that we put interim on it when Dave made the nomination uh, for Lonnie. Um, um, I guess it was early 17 was, was when that happened. He put the word interim on it, but does interim appear in our ordinances uh, or is it defined or, or anything like that? Uh, you, may not, Davis, you may not know. I'm just, just Commissioner Davis, I would say that I, I don't recall the term interim being specifically addressed or defined in the Code of Ordinances. Okay, so the treating it as such and not requiring a resignation or termination is is based on your definition of the word interim or or is it when you on have something a, else when you have a term that is not defined by a set of ordinances statutes then the courts often refer to you simply define it by its common usage as set forth in the dictionary okay thank you thank you and i did not bring the march 8th 2017 um, minutes with me but the uh, interim was used in the appointment just for clarification there i was i wasn't i wasn't disputing that you, you, okay. you are correct all right so uh, we have the 4-1 vote to have that on the 2 p.m regular session 
And as we move through the agenda here, the next thing on the agenda is reports from committees and departments. We're pleased to have Ms. Uh, Mary Carol Sheffield from the County Extension uh, Office, uh, the coordinator of County Extension, to uh, bring us up to date. Thank you for being here, Mary Carol. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for having me. N Happy New Year and welcome and welcome back. Thanks. Um, I'm really excited to be here today and to report to you on the progress of our county extension program um, and to thank you for your support. We're grateful for the opportunity to serve the citizens of our community with the resources of the University of Georgia in the areas of agriculture and natural resources, family and consumer sciences, and 4-H and youth. So many thanks to you for your support of our work. Um, in the last six months, we've had several changes at our office. We've brought on um, several new fantastic staff members, including a new 4-H agent, Josie Davis, who I believe is in the back of the room right here, and also um, a couple of new 4-H program assistants, Rhonda Lagley and Natasha Middleton. Rhonda's also back at the back of the room. And um, we retained our fantastic administrative assistant, Tina Roll, and a great 4-H program assistant, Kathleen Gilroy, and that's helped us to retain some consistency in our programming. Um, I've provided you guys a copy of our annual report, and there's some extra copies in the back if anybody's interested in picking one up before you go. Um, just to highlight some of our, our program successes this year. Uh, our 4-H program remains one of the largest and most active in the state. And I always like to, to qualify that and say we're not just the largest and one of the most active we're really successful we have great youth in our county and um, our youth are engaged they're successful and they are um, well-rounded and they represent us with pride in our county and then out in the state too, um, to provide our outreach and this year we had 65 programs that reached 5,922 people uh, we had 24 volunteers at our annual Rivers Alive cleanup at White Oak Park this year. And earlier in the year, before our cleanup, we have successive cleanups each year, but we were awarded the Georgia EPD 4-H um, Rivers Alive Award. Um, and we also, very early in the year, collaborated with Kennesaw State, the Department of Natural Resources, the Nature Conservancy, and the Paulding County Water System uh, to organize and host the Raccoon Creek Symposium, highlighting research, education, and conservation in Paulding County, because our county although it's not well recognized, is a really biodiverse and interesting place when it comes to the ecosystem that we have here. I think it's one of our greatest treasures is natural resources, and I'm really grateful to work in a county where that's the case. Um, program numbers for those ag natural resources, those 65 programs, wouldn't be possible without the help of Master Gardener volunteers. We have lots of 4-H volunteers. We also have uh, adult Master Gardener volunteers. Um, Marsha Rauscher is here with me today. She's one of my Master Gardener volunteers. And they have donated almost 1,800 hours of service last year, and that's valued at more than $41,000. So for me, that's like having an extra staff member for free. And I love those folks. They help me get a whole lot of those programs done. They also, in addition to their programmatic work, um, have for the last nine years funded and awarded a local student a $1,000 scholarship for college. And they've developed and delivered school gardening training this year as a new portion of their programming. Um, so I just want to thank you again for your support. And please know that you can call on me anytime if you have questions or ideas about programming that might be beneficial to our county. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have about extension. How's the BB team doing? They're doing great. They are um, practicing twice a week starting in the new year, and we have a new head coach this year who's doing a fantastic job. We're looking forward to competitions haven't started yet, but they'll start soon, so we're ramping up for that. Right. Thank, great. You, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're always glad to get updates on the, uh, the growth and the permits from Paulding yeah. County and uh, the last six or eight months, Ms. Lippman has come and reported on a regular basis. So, um, Ann, thank you for uh, bringing us up to date. Um, and while this is getting up, I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but in 1994, I was a first-year grad student at Clemson University after graduating from the University of Georgia, and I can say that last night's game was much better for my heart rate than 
or last night's game was better than the 2018 game, but it's not too shabby when your number two team is number one. So, um, and if you, anybody who knows me knows I love quotes, and head coach Dave O'Sweeney is a very quotable guy, and I just wanted to start off with one of his quotes that is, to be an overachiever, you have to be an overbeliever. Um, he has a lot of quotes about teams. I have a whole page if anybody's interested. Um, but on behalf of the community development team, I just wanted to wish everyone a happy new year and that we look forward to working with you. Um, I do have some information specifically about building permits and business licenses, which I know have been some hot topics. And we just have um, just some summary information from 2018. We had 6,135 permits issued. Um, you can see the trends. They tend to go up in the summer months and fall down in the winter months. Um, our building inspectors did 12,658 inspections last year. Um, I know single family development is a hot topic here, so I wanted to kind of go back to 2010 since the last census was done. Um, we've issued 6,974 permits since then. Um, but please note the difference between 2018 and 2017. Between 2016 and 17, we had a 20% growth of permits. Between 2017 and 18, we had 2% growth in single family permits. Um, so I believe as national and Atlanta trends go that the, the single family permits are slowing down. Um, so I think that that'll be interesting to see where that goes in the new year. I don't see anything any more 20% increases. Um, population projection based on post. Um, if you look, and I think my numbers, I track numbers um, based on issuance of COs, and I think if you look at what the state projects, they project our population right about 160,000, and that's what we show. And so this chart just shows the difference between each of the four posts, and you can see that most of the growth has occurred in post four. They've had about 35% growth, and the county overall has had right under 15% growth. Um, next, I wanted to go back and look at the comparison of single family permits as well as non residential permits. This is a little hard to read, I apologize, but it goes back to 2011, and you can definitely see positive growth in that, but definitely that single family detached. Um, outweighed non-residential by a long amount. But when you compare the value of construction, the, the teal color is non-residential growth and the, or value, and the orange is single family. Um, there are a couple spikes in there. 2012 is when the hospital was permitted. I believe they did the second floor in 2015 or 16, and 2017 is the reservoir, and 2018 is the jail. So those are technically non-residential growth. Um, moving on to business licenses, we currently have 3,095 business licenses in the county. The chart attached to it just shows the amount of new um, licenses and renewals. We had 677 new business licenses in 2018, and the breakdown between home occupations and commercial, we have 2,319 home occupations are 73% and 850 are commercial locations. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions or if there's any other information anyone would like, I'd love to get with you. And again, thank you for letting me do this every quarter now. <laughs> thank you, Ann. We have uh, no one who signed up for public participation on agenda items. Uh, under the consent agenda, is discuss action on four consent agenda items. Number one is to approve uh, Chairman Carmichael's designation of the uh, Commissioner of Commissioner Brian Stover as Chairman Pro Tem. Number two is to appoint Mr. Jim Henson. Uh, as the representative for the city of Dallas on the Planning and Zoning Commission with a term ending December 31st, 2019. Number three is to appoint Harold Lennon Cole to the uh, Pauling County Airport Authority with a three-year term ending December 31st, 2022. And number four is to appoint Miss Wendy Turnbill as the uh, chairman's representative on the Planning and Zoning Board with a term ending December 31st, 2019. Would any of the commissioners like to move any of the consent agenda items to new business? Yes, sir. Please move number one and number three. 
Okay, we'll move number one and number three to new business. Any other request? Under old business, we have none. Under new business, uh, we now have uh, number one new business is to appoint <coughs> Chairman Carmichael's designation. I of think, the, excuse me, Dave. I think number one in new business would be the discussion, would be, uh, didn't you add for uh, the county attorney? Wasn't that added as new business, number one? Uh, <clears throat> that's for this afternoon. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Rebecca. Yeah, the, the motion is uh, for the 2 p.m. agenda. I believe the motion was to add it to the 2 p.m. agenda. Okay, so we're not even going to discuss that in the work session? No. Uh, it, we would have just come out of closed session and added to the agenda for the 2 p.m. It was never intended to be discussed at, at this work session. I see. Hey, hey Dave. I'd like to move uh, number two and number four to the cons two o'clock consent agenda. Number two and number four of the consent agenda to the two o'clock. If you want to move those, um, Commissioner, we can we can talk about those now. Okay. They're gonna they're gonna just a point just for clarification. They're on the consent agenda. Uh, if we move them, we move, we can we have the option if we want to move them to new business. They'll be on the consent as as they are before you spoke. They'll be on the two o'clock under consent agenda. If you okay. want to move them under new business, it would just change where they are on the agenda. Okay. I'll keep them where they're at. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna leave we're gonna leave those on the consent agenda or. <laughs> now what I see is the request are that we have one and three by Commissioner <laughs> Davis and two and four. Uh, by Commissioner Stover, all to be, be moved to regular okay. uh, business that we can talk about now. Okay. Okay, so all of those will be moved under new business to dis for discussion. Yeah, that can be discussed now. Right. Okay, so uh, the, <coughs> the other motion is for the 2 p.m. that involves TRC, Tally Richardson Cable, but uh, for discussion now, uh, approve Chairman Carmichael's designation of Commissioner Brian Stover as chairman pro tem <clears throat> so we'll discuss that now well we can we can go ahead and discuss that i'm in a little bit of an awkward situation here uh, having this discussion uh for those in the room i, I had the conversation with dave last week and um uh, i had hoped we wouldn't have to to have this discussion here but but we need to in september 2017 dave came to me and asked me to fill this role uh at the time i told him i appreciated it but i wasn't uh done with the um, the certified county commissioner, and I was also wasn't uh, I, I wasn't a senior member on the board. So we we nominated Todd. He nominated Todd Pownell, uh, and then Todd Todd carried that role. I still think it should be a senior member on the board, but granted that puts it makes it weird because I'm here as a senior member of the board. Um, and I had this conversation with Dave, and Dave, I understand that things have happened, and you may not want me to to have this designation, and I'm fine with that. Um, what what I what I do feel very strongly is that this is a lot to put on a commissioner who's brand new in his first meeting So I had asked you to put it off for a year and you you said you weren't going to and I asked you to put it off for six months And then you weren't going to I um, I think Brian will be fine But it's a lot to put on him his first first meeting and so um, That's that's my concern here. So don't don't make it me. That's fine But but don't don't put something on on someone that they're not they're not ready and prepared to take on that responsibility and that's and that's my position I've spoken to Brian about this I spoke with Brian about this yesterday uh, so that he would know my heart where I'm coming from uh, and he knows this is not, nothing personal on him and we had a good conversation about that yesterday um, but I do I do feel very strongly about that and so that's why I asked this to be moved okay well I uh, appreciate your remarks uh, that's why we need to move them if someone wants to comment on them uh, I certainly do have uh, reasons I'm not going into detail. Uh, you need a pro tem um, to sign checks to oversee the meeting. Uh, so I think uh, Commissioner Stover is more than prepared and able to do that, and he and I have talked about it also. So number two is appoint Jim Henson uh, as a representative for the city of Dallas uh, on the Planning and Zoning Commission with a term ending December 31st, 2019. 
Mr. Stover, you wanted to move that for uh, discussion also? No, I'll, I'll keep it for today, for 10 o'clock. Okay. All right, uh, number three is to appoint uh, Harold Lennicole to the Pawling County Airport Authority for a three-year term ending December 31st, 2022. Yeah, thank you. I, um, I Just a quick note on this. I, um, in the past, I've had uh, concerns with this nomination. Uh, I think Mr. Lennicole's been, his name's been brought up a number of times in the last, well, since Dave took office in 2017. Um, the reason that I had to um, oppose previously because there was a conflict, he was uh, working with the Michael Baker Group, who was involved with the environmental assessment uh, out at the airport and all of the um, controversy out there. That, that uh, conflict of interest is now resolved, and so I'm able to um, support the, the nominee from the chairman. And I just wanted to explain that. Um, after taking one position and changing it, I wanted an opportunity to explain that change. Okay, thank you. And uh, Commissioner Stover, do you, do you want to talk about number four in the afternoon too? No, I withdraw four also. Okay, withdraw four. All right. We've uh, gone through the new business then, uh, and that's the conclusion of our regular business. Uh, we have uh, no executive session. Uh, we have uh, none of the public who signed up for non-agenda items. And this time I'd just like to uh, echo what's been said before. Thank you all for being a part of uh, your county government. And as you've heard, all of us uh, on this panel, along with the county administrator, uh, would like to hear from you. Uh, there's no higher priority, I think, for any of us than to uh, listen and hear from our constituents. So we look forward to a great year, and I hope you have a great one also, uh, happy and prosperous. And I'll take a, a motion at this time uh, for adjournment. I'll make a motion we adjourn. A motion to adjourn by Commissioner Davis. Is there a second? A second by Commissioner Caker. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. <laughs>